Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Dadich and I am the Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. In today's lecture, lecture number 15, we will talk about insolvency and bankruptcy law. Insolvency and bankruptcy, you know, these are very classical words in our uh, Indian culture you know that you are insolvent now you know and how this insolvency and bankruptcy provisions are important in law or in business. I give you very simple example so that you can understand the larger context. When you start working as a business manager or entrepreneur you do lot of transactions and business is all about trust that you give your product someone gives you money and this is how business is run and cash flow management is very very important that money should come and money should go okay whenever this flow is restricted or disturbed then the entire market can be disturbed like for example if i give you product okay and you are supposed to give me 10 lakh rupees fair enough if you give me that 10 lakh rupees, then I will also give uh, 8 lakh rupees to other people like for example, the vendors, suppliers, my employees and everyone and then maybe 10 to 20 percent would be my profit. And then I will use that profit for my home as well as I will use that money for reinvestment. Okay? And this is how we run our business. Now what happens, suppose if you do not give me that 10 lakh rupees, you have got some issues, you know some genuine issues, maybe real or fake, intentionally or unintentionally at the end of the day, it does not matter. I am not getting my money back. So now those guys, all the 8 lakh rupees which they are supposed to get from me, now they are not able to get that money. So the vendor, the supplier, the raw material supplier. Uh, other service providers, my employees, so everyone will suffer. Then they will also become a defaulter. Once you become a defaulter, then I become defaulter and then other people will default, uh, become defaulter and so and so. Okay. So, this, this process can start from one person and it can affect many people's life and ultimately it can affect the entire business. So, what to do in this situation? Okay, I can file a case against you and case will go on, go on for 5 years, 10 years, 20 years. I am not getting my money. So, if I am not getting my money, then uh, what I will do with this litigation? And you are also incurring lot of cost. I am also incurring lot, lot of cost. So, everyone is suffering. In that scenario, the government of India has introduced a new type of solution. Insolvency and bankruptcy law was there in India earlier also, but in 2016, they introduced a new solution. That let us say ki if uh, you are not able to give me 10 lakh rupees, then I must be able to go and say ki you are, if you are not able to give me that money, you, you have become insolvent. You are not able to protect and respect your promises. So, you have no right to run your company. In that scenario, the court the, here, the NCLT, we will talk more about, let us talk about the court for example, will introduce a new guy in that company, in your company and that guy will manage the show. He will say, okay, now the overall liability on your company may be 1 crore rupees, you are not able to give them. So, let us shut down your company or we will run your company, but this is how we will repay the amount. So, this entire process is very important for businesses okay, 
So, I believe that after this lecture you will understand that how insolvency and bankruptcy law can be an opportunity as well as a threat for your company. Okay? So, business not just in India, but also around the world have time and again run into financial difficulties which has led to closing of companies and selling of the assets of the company to pay the creditors. See, we need to protect the uh, interest of creditors. Okay? So, it is it's, it's very classical, it is not new one that people are closing their companies, they are selling their assets you know just to repay their debts. So, this is very classical situation. The closing of a company has many economic implications as it leads to job of uh, loss of jobs, also it diminishes the earning capacity of the country at large. So, if you shut down your uh, company, then not only creditors suffer, but people lose their job and ultimately this is a national tragedy. Okay? We do not want that people should uh, you know shut down their companies, there has to be some solution. Sometime intentionally, unintentionally or due to market situations, you are stuck somewhere. Okay? So, once you are stuck somewhere, you need a solution and maybe because of the court litigation, both parties are fighting with each other. So, they are maybe not able to find a workable solution. So, this law gives them a workable solution. Therefore, to prevent the closing down of business, may many countries have made serious efforts to formulate certain laws and regulations to help the failing company to stand on its feet and recover from heavy debts. What we want? We do not want that people should close their companies. Yes, we do understand now they are in bad situation, their finance situation is not good, they have heavy debts, but at the same time we want that they should recover. Okay? Because once they recover, this is good for everyone, for their employees, for their vendors, for their credit creditors and even for the government. Because if someone is dead, you cannot get anything, you know a dead person cannot create anything. So, what, what we want that the sick companies, the companies uh, facing some financial difficulties, they must be able to recover. Okay? So, this is like in a new type of approach that do not kill the company, just find a solution. On the same line of thought, the Indian legislature also enacted the insolvency and bankruptcy code in order to help those companies who are in debts and are unable to pay the creditors. So, same approach that we want to help both. It is not only creditors, but we want to help the uh, debitors also. What we want that both parties, because it is not only the only, as I said, it is not only the companies or the promoters, it is a big chain, you know, the employees, vendors, suppliers, so many people are depending on business. Okay? So, we want to help all of them. The idea behind the code was to provide a rescue mechanism, rescue mechanism to the companies so that they may they can recover fast and again become a wheel in the economic progress of the company. So, it is a rescue mission, you know it is not killing mission, it is not killing objective that let us kill someone. See when you go to a court room like normal court room, court says okay, we really do not care about your business, you have to pay this money, if you cannot pay this money, we will attach your property and we will do this, that, that, somehow you have to pay. Okay. The court is not designed to understand the business and economic aspects of any company. The court will do only legal analysis that legally if you are supposed to pay, you pay. We really do not care about your financial situation, we do not care about your economic situation, the market situation. Like for example, this uh, uh, during the corona period, if you go to a court room and say okay, this guy is not paying my money. The court will examine the documents and say okay, after examining the documents, after maybe a very lengthy litigation and they say okay, as per the contract you are supposed to pay, so you pay. We really do not care about corona or maybe some uh, problem happened in the market, you know. So, sometimes the courts are not the right solution for the business problems. Moreover, the act also provides easy exit option to those countries who have reached to a stage from where recovery is not possible and closing down the business is the best available option. 
So, it's, see sometimes exit option is also required. You want to quit because you know that it cannot recover, you know it, everybody know that it is it, it's impossible, you know. So, instead of putting too much more money and more resources, more effort just to make it live, sometimes it is good to exit, you know. So, whatever you have right now, like for example, if I give a simple uh, example, see I am trying to give you simple explanations instead of very complicated legal understanding. Suppose you have a company, your assets are maybe 100 crore rupees. Now, due to some business failure, some market situations, and X, Y, Z, many factors are there to fail a business. So, your overall debts are now 500 crore rupees, and you know that business is not happening, and there is no way that you can uh, continue with these 500 crore rupees debts. Okay. So, now there are two options either we use the first option that we try to recover you. But the market is such that there is no possibility okay. with this finance uh, accounting, accounting rules there is 0 percent possibility that you can recover. So, now what we can do first option go to the court file the case fight fight for 5 years 10 years 15 years and meanwhile business is not happening. So, your assets are uh, you know losing their uh, value like for example, machines. If production is not happening, what will happen with the machines? Right now, maybe the value is 50 crore rupees, but after 10 years, uh, maybe nobody is ready to take them even for 1 crore rupees. Okay? So, this is very important. This is very, very important to understand. This is very important to understand that uh, if you exit at right moment, maybe you can get the right price. And then if you are able to get 100 crore rupees at one particular point, maybe you can pay 20 percent of your debts, maybe not 100 percent, but 20 percent. Now, maybe your question is sir, this is uh, injustice for the, uh, the people who have lost losing their money, but then my argument is that after 10 years, 15 years if the value of that company assets uh, will go down to 10 crore rupees, then what will happen with the debtors? Right now, they are able to get 20 percent, maybe after 10 years, they will get only uh, 1 percent. And even after lengthy litigation, they are putting more and more money on lawyers, litigation, law firms. Okay. And uh, 1 rupee is better if you get today rather than 2 rupees you get after 15 years, because you can use that 1 rupee immediately. So, these are the philosophies of uh, insolvency and bankruptcy law. So, sometimes exit option is also good. Therefore, this PPT or this lecture will focus on intricacies involved in IBC and uh, also try uh, to explain the technical terms they are being used frequently in the code. So, insolvency and bankruptcy are the same. Let us see. Insolvency means the inability of the business entity to pay off its debts which it owns that is an insolvency. Okay. It can be further classified into two types one, one is where the company assets are not sufficient enough to completely pay off the debts of the company. Like for example, if all the assets are sold then also the debt will not be fully paid like just I said ki 100 crore rupees assets value debts are 500 crore. So, even if you sell the entire thing you will not be able to pay 500. Second is the day to day inability to pay off any debt as it falls due the company does not have enough cash in hand to pay any kind of debt that may arise in the day to day functioning of the company. Sometimes it is not about the assets, maybe they have more than 1000 crore rupees assets, okay. but for the day to day management like suppose every month you have to pay 50 crore rupees. you know. So, you do not have that 50 crore rupees in cash every month to pay your debts. I hope you are, uh, you are very clear. In one situation, uh, your assets are not enough, so you cannot pay. Second, your, we are not talking about assets, maybe you have assets 1000 crore, but your day to day financial uh, cash flow is not enough to pay your debts. Okay? In that situation, the company is unable to respect its uh, liabilities. 
bankruptcy bankruptcy is a step ahead of insolvency it is a legal declaration by the court of one inability to pay debt so basic difference is in insolvency the business itself declared that they are unable to pay debts however when the same gets sanctioned from the court then it becomes bankrupt okay moreover bankruptcy is that legal process through which people or other entities who cannot repay debts to creditors may seek relief from some or all of their debts therefore when an organization is unable to honor its financial obligations or make payment to its creditors then in such case it file for bankruptcy in both situation i don't have money but the the, the fine difference is that in insolvency either your assets are not sufficient or your cash flow is not sufficient so you declare that sorry i can't pay you know like i so for example i am in this situation i will say okay sorry i can't pay my cash flow is very less i am making only 7 crore rupees cash flow every month so how can i pay 20 crore rupees every month this is impossible for me you know so please uh, i want to declare myself as a insolvent okay in bankruptcy situation is different here the creditors are going to court room or they are they are going to the concerned authorities and say ki this guy is not paying us our debts okay uh, for example suppose the uh, monthly requirement is 20 crore rupees okay maybe your cash flow is 17 18 so you are not sure like to whom i should pay okay so you are paying some time to this guy some time that guy and you are using some money for your home some for reinvestment so many things are happening so even you are not sure whether you are insolvent or not you are trying your best you know in that scenario the parties cannot wait to you become insolvent so they can go to the court and say okay please declare him bankrupt he is not able to respect or honor his financial obligations in that scenario please declare him is bankrupt and ensure that we get our money back okay i hope that now you are clear the distinction between insolvency and bankruptcy liquidation after bankruptcy if the firm is unable to recover and still in debt the next stage that the company follows is to go to the liquidation liquidation is a formally the process of closing a business so that its assets can be sold to pay its debts to liquidate a company is to close it down or sell all its assets usually because it could not repay the debts so what will happen the first thing insolvent second is bankruptcy and third is liquidation liquidation means that now the court will appoint someone and that guy will start the liquidation process they say okay uh, you can't pay uh, so what we will do we will sell your entire company and whatever money we will receive we will pay to uh, creditors and why court appoint someone because if i give the same task to that person the real owner of that company there is a possibility that the money can go from here and there okay he can do maybe something which is not acceptable which is not good for creditors in that scenario the court appoints the uh, person who does this activity so legal framework that existed prior to ibc so what was the legal situation before the ibc prior to ibc there were many laws in india that dealt with aspect of repayment of debt in india okay all the acts had one or other provisions or authority that had an important role to play in debt repayment or closing down the company so this is not a, like a new situation as i told you people were losing their money earlier companies were shutting down so this is very old situation so before ibc there were few laws so this is like a sikh industrial companies special provision act 1985 the act was enacted with the objective of timely detention and revival of sikh industries companies so board of industries and financial reconstruction and appellate authority for industrial and financial reconstruction were formed under this act but the act had many loopholes which were creating issues in timely resolution of debts in company so basically they were trying to restructure the financial situation of the company 
but it was it, it was not working frankly speaking it was very lengthy very lengthy and inefficient process and ultimately nobody was winning in this case then recovery of debt act 1993 then sarfasi act introduced by rbi schemes and mechanism introduced by rbi for restructuring of non performing assets it talked about out of court process but lacked the legal sanction okay and then there was a some a, a old laws also like the companies act company uh, they also have provision that if someone is not able to repay the uh, debts then you can go for the wind up of winding up of the company that this company should be set it down on the ground of inability to pay debts okay inter alia so you need to understand that these provisions were earlier present in the laws it's not like that this is the first time the government is trying to create a legal framework the only issue that all these provisions were here and there and there was no consistency so people moved in different types of litigation different forums like the company board civil court criminal court high court and so much chaos okay so it was very difficult to find out a right solution an organized efficient solution then there was another law presidency town insolvency act 1909 and provisional insolvency act 1920 these were the earliest law that deals with insolvency of individuals and partnership it also provided for filing of the application so during the british period we also had insolvency law however with the growth of business the provision proved to be obstacle and no help in the present situation so these laws were not helping the business and then why we enacted a new code reasons are very simple uh, if you see the time in years you know time taken to resolve insolvency so then if you see singapore 0 0.8 years like 8 months usa 1 year uk 1 year china 1.7 south africa 2.0 and india 4.3 okay so in 2016 it was 4.3 it means almost four four to five time, times compared to singapore and usa and uk and came down to 1.6 in year 2019 so now you can see very clearly that if it takes too much time like all the old laws you know they were there but the time taken average time again i say it's an average time you know so in some cases maybe it goes to six years seven years eight years what will you do after eight years you know if you lose your money if you lose your assets after eight years there is no one uh, use that capital then if you see ease of doing business ranking world bank 2015 reports so th these reports are issued by the world bank every year and talks about ease of doing business in a particular country so in this particular uh, manner the insolvency uh, thing singapore was number one and usa number seven uk eight and india was 142 in 2015 okay it was very difficult to recover money in india you know and our ranking out of 189 nations 142 that's that's not good for any uh, mature jurisdictions like india mature economy like india and finally in 2020 it came down to 63 so you can say you can see very clearly 142 to 63 so the impact of this insolvency and bankruptcy law can be easily seen through this uh, chart that from 4.3 years to 1.6 years uh, then 142 ranking to 63 ranking and problems and reasons to failure of these laws why the law failed the, the current state of bankruptcy process for firm is highly fragmented framework as i said earlier fragmented everywhere so ultimately you don't get any answer after seven eight years nine years ten years you get an answer and by that time uh, there is no use of debt capital or resources you want quick solution you know you want that if i want to exit from this business i should be able to exit in one one year one and a half year then i can use some of the resources and do some something else 
Okay. Same thing for creditors. If I can get my 20, 30, 40 percent money right now, instead of 10 years, 15 years, then I can use that money. Powers of creditors and debtors under insolvency law are provided for under different acts. So, even the powers and the responsibilities, the, see it was completely mismatch. You know, one law was saying X, other law was saying Y and completely mismatch. And multiplicity of forums under various laws resulting in lack of clarity for jurisdiction. In a situation where one forum decides on matters relating to the rights of the creditors while another decides on the relating to the rights of the debtor. The decisions are read, uh, easily appealed against the either state or overturned in a higher court. So, it was like one court, another court giving different judgments, people were appealing in the high court and now you can easily see when so many litigations are happening at different level, it can create only chaos, it can create only confusion. Due to delay in resolution because of the loopholes in the previous legislatures, a need was felt to have a consolidate law, consolidate like the, you know one law that can be used to provide a viable solution for companies and creditors. Okay. So, the forum interested with adjudicating on matters relating to insolvency and bankruptcy were regular forum and the people sitting in those forums might not have the expertise. This is again very important, you know expertise to have financial expertise. They must understand the nitty gritties of business. If you ask a normal judge who is doing, uh, who is hearing civil, criminal, family, all types of disputes and suddenly you ask that just to deal with uh, very complicated financial transactions, business transactions, market realities. It is difficult for that just to even decide, you know, to understand and appreciate. So, we need a forum where the, the judges are so ex, very much expert and there should be a panel of judges, you know, not only one judge. So, one guy can be expert in business, other guy can be expert in law and the other judge can be expert in finance or accounting. So, this is how we can create a mechanism where uh, the courts can give uh, business friendly solutions. You know, as a business student you need to understand that they need business friendly solutions. It is not against one person or favor in one person, ultimately everybody should be a winner. My dear students, uh, the only contracts or agreements or any system survive when both parties are winner. Okay. Even if one party is loser, that contract will not survive for a longer period, that system will not survive for a longer period. So, in that scenario, suppose if I am the debtor, if I have lost my money, I have lost my company, but after repaying all the debts, my now I have no debts, I am absolutely clear. I lost my company like 500 crore rupees debts, 100 crore rupees assets and I said okay, please sell all of my assets and make me free. Okay. So, after this process I can go back and start a new business okay. and I do not want to hit again again the same wall you know because that will not bring any outcome. So, this is good for me and win, win situation for me. And it is a win situation for creditor because right now within one year, one and a half year that creditor will receive some money and he will not invest more money on litigation and disputes. Okay. And whatever money he receives that will be transparent, there will be no game and whatever he receives quickly he can use it for his business. Okay. So, at least he can mitigate his losses. And uh, students, you need to understand in business, uh, certainty is very important. If I know that today I am going to get a 20 crore and through this deal I will lose 30 crore, like total was 50, I am getting only 20. So, 30 crore is my loss, that is fine. If I know today, it is better for me. The problem is that if I know that after 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, I really do not know how much money I am going to lose, how much money I am going to get, this uncertainty is not good for any business. Okay? And why code and not an act? 
so a court consolidate laws relating under one umbrella providing compilation of rules regulations and laws act normally are stand alone you know the contract act sales good act but if you put them in one umbrella where different uh, laws different acts are uh, working all together to find a common solution a code of law is a type of legislature that purports the uh, you know complete system you understand because as we see in earlier that when you have different laws different places different forums then it creates uncertainty so code creates a certain mechanism while an act is a piece of legislature where is the base of forming a law the insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016 is a code and not an act a unified code to deal with the insolvency law in india which covers every aspect of the legislature so now see the object and purpose of the insolvency code to consolidate and amend the law relating to insolvency and corporate persons partnership firms and individuals in a time bound manner students the second thing which is very important for any business is time the first thing as i said certainty that what is going to happen if i know today i am okay i can integrate that loss profit financial situation into my books and then i can make my strategy okay now you please try to understand this insolvency law from business perspective okay so a, as a business person if you know that what is the situation good or bad you can integrate in your strategy in your planning okay uncertainty is a problem second after certainty you want time bound process time bound process means that you should know exactly that how much time it will take if i tell you okay you will get 5 crore rupees or you will tell i will tell you you get 100 crore rupees that's fine but if i say i really don't know when maybe 2 years 5 years 10 years 15 years that's a problem for business because as a business person you want time framework also certainty how much and time when so maximization of the value of assets so you want to you don't want that asset should lose that uh, value with the time to promote entrepreneurship you know so you must be able to take some risk if you start a business if you lose a business uh you want to exit you know you don't want to involve in too much litigations so you want if you want to become an entrepreneur you need an environment where you can exit also quickly to establish an insolvency board of india to designate the nclt national company law tribunal and drt debt recovery tribunal as executing acting body in the insolvency proceeding to separate the commercial aspects of in insolvency and bankruptcy from the judicial aspect so sometime commercial and judicial when i say judicial means legal you don't want to mix them too much so sometime you want a mechanism where uh, law and business they are dealt differently okay key achievements of the code what we have achieved through this code i think i have already given you some numbers you can easily see that in within 3 years 3 to 4 years we have achieved a lot you know and it's not the government of india's data it's a world bank data so it's very much clear that now our country is not seen as a defaulters paradise earlier the image was and still it's like i must say because this is a new law it will take some time but still uh, people believe that if you don't pay someone's money nothing is going to happen no that's not the situation anymore if you don't pay your money if you're a defaulter it's not a paradise for any more it's a hell okay people will go and ask directly to the nclt that please declare him bankrupt okay suppose if i am a very big businessman very very big businessman and if i if i don't want to pay you my your money like suppose if i am a very big businessman i have lot of money but this is how i have done my business that i don't pay you money like suppose you supplied me uh, 20 uh, suppose 5 crore rupees raw material so my strategy is that i don't pay you i am such a big businessman so maybe first 
two or transaction I give you 100 percent, but after third and fourth transaction I do not pay you. I say okay, I do not have money, though I have money, because I know that I am a big guy and if you want to go to the court, let us go to the court. I, I do not mind, I will pay maybe 5, 10 lakh rupees to my lawyers and they will fight for me. Then we will negotiate and I will uh, you will say okay sir, if you cannot pay me 5 crore, can you pay me five, 2 crore? I say okay, 2 crore is fine, take 2 crore and go away. So, this is how I run my business. I am sorry to say this was this was and still this is quite common in India, but now because of insolvency and bankruptcy code, you will not negotiate with me. You say okay, you, you do not want to pay me, that is fine, I am going to NCLT and I will make a request before the NCLT that please declare this company, this big guy as a bankrupt. Okay, if he cannot pay the money, he should not run his business. So, now this uh, defaulters paradise uh, uh, you know approach or the image of this country is changing, provided easy access to the corporations. That is very important. Sometimes you are a good guy, you want to continue, but you are not able to continue. So, instead of you know killing you or uh, filing more and more cases against you, everybody knows that you are not going to, you have no capability to pay. So, instead of uh, harassing you and uh, putting more and more cases involved in too much litigation, why we cannot create a system where people can exit peacefully, okay. Help in improving India's rank in ease of doing business ranking from 142 to 63. So, that is a big number. Transport the resolution process in the hands of body of experts, okay. This is very important. Earlier, the, uh, uh, the government officers or maybe the uh, judges, they were involved, uh, they were doing this job. Now, the experts, the real business experts are doing it. The judicial interference in resolution process has been reduced, still is there, high courts and supreme court still they are there, but they do not interfere in day to day uh, process. Directed to bring the corporate debtors, the company who are in debt back on its feet. And, and not mere recovery legislature for creditors. So, if even if you are a big guy, that does not matter. Like Anil, uh, Anil Ambani, it is a very simple example, okay. Anil Ambani was declared bankrupt. Okay. So, this is very simple, it really does not matter whether a small guy or big guy, if you are not able to pay your loan, uh, if you are not able to pay your, uh, if you are not able to respect your financial obligations, you have no legal right to do business. Okay, as simple as that. Interest of corporate debtors bifurcated from the interest of promoters, this is very important. Sometimes promoters, the people who are uh, the real owners and the, the company. So, sometimes they have vested interest, you know, the promoters they want to take more and more money. In this case, it will be stopped. Inefficient promoters and management barred from regaining the control of corporate debtors object at bringing the corporate debtor back to on the track, liquidation has been suggested as the last resort. Okay. So, what they want that the idea is that the company should run, you know company should run, we should try to find a solution. Suppose, if we believe that these the owners, promoters, you know they are inefficient, we can remove them, we can put some official, uh, well educated, uh, trained uh, MBAs like you, you know, suppose you are an MBA, you are, so maybe they, they can appoint you as a CEO of that company and you can run that company, okay. And liquidation process, like liquidation means like selling off the entire company and asset is like the last option, okay. It is not, this is not the first option, this is the last option. Management of company transfer in the hands of expert professional during the resolution process. So, during this process, the promoters, board, they have nothing to say. Now, the expert people are running the show. Provides for the provision to deal with concealment, frauds and manipulation. Okay. So, if, if the promoters or the board of management, if they are trying to conceal something, if they are doing some fraud or manipulation, there are some provisions to deal with those situations also. So, this is the scheme of act. Uh, you can see easily chapter 1, chapter 2 corporate insolvency resolution process, liquidation process, fast track corporate insolvency resolution process, voluntary liquid. So, you can see easily you know it is a very clearly and chapter 7 talks about offenses and penalties. Then 
part 4 regulation of insolvency professional agencies and information utilities okay so what triggers an insolvency when it starts the insolvency codes get triggered when the company the corporate debtor is unable to pay off its debt to the creditors and the creditors approach the adjudicating authority nclt national company law tribunal and you need to understand nclt is not only in delhi now they have more than 25 branches in india <coughs> so almost they are in every state so if someone a company is not paying the debt then you can approach to your local branch you know if you are suppose in any state you are you can go and file a case nclt by an application which includes a demand notice stating the amount that is due to be paid so first the nclt says okay, please give the amount if you are not able to pay then we will start the process uh, pillars of ibc insolvency and bankruptcy board of india okay this is the unique regulator uh, regulator constituted under the code which regulates the professional as well as the process under the code insolvency professional so you can also become an insolvency professional so uh, they are the people who are uh, treated as an experts these insolvency professionals are private professionals having uh, enough education professional standards and ethical under the super uh, under the supervision of the board insolvency professional agencies and educating authorities like the nclt okay and in the case of individual and partnership firms uh, the debt recovery tribunal so this is the process you can see very easily filing of application in the nclt the, you file the application then they announce in the public appointment of uh, insolvency professional declaration then invitation of claims then constitution of committee of creditors then appointment of uh, rp then invitation of interest and issuance of uh, im information memorandum submission of resolution plans to rp approval of plan by coc and acceptance rejection plans by nclt so this is very clear very smooth process and we will see the timeline now you know how it happens when it happens so important cases now we will deal with some important cases so the first is jk jute mills company limited versus surendra trading company so in this case it's a, a, it was decided by the supreme court that 14 days for the aa to admit or reject an application 7 days of an applicant to rectify so they have given the timelines basically so the timeline for 14 and 30 days are directory in nature while those are 7 and 180 days are mandatory under the court so time frame is well defined in insolvency and bankruptcy code so if you read this law you will understand that time is very very important time is the crux okay proceeding under the code are not necessary adversarial so in this case the executing authority observed that apparent reading of the code will reveal that it's not an adversarial proceeding prevalence of the democratic system ensure that all the executing authority cannot hang on or in conventional approach that the legal proceedings shall be adversarial okay so this is very clear that this is not like a hard remedy this is nothing against one person you need to understand the court decides that you are right you are wrong in this case insolvency and professional uh, board they, they don't want to decide that you are right or you are wrong they are just trying to find a business solution okay rule of principle of natural justice so in this case calcutta high court observed that the requirement of nclt and nclat uh, to adhere to the principle of natural justice to be determined okay so principle of natural justice as we discussed earlier that principle that right to be heard that no one can take a decision without giving an opportunity there should not be any bias there should be a fairness so all these principles they have to follow it also held that nclt is obliged to afford a reasonable opportunity to the financial debtors and it may do so prior to admitting the petition filed under section 7 so they have to give a reasonable time to debtor you know it's, they cannot say okay now in 5 days you pay your debts they have to give them reasonable time reasonable opportunity okay and then another case section 424 of the companies act requires the nclt and nclat to adhere the principle of natural justice this is very clear 
held it is mandatory duty of the adjudicating authority to issue notice before admitting application of CRP, CIRP under section 9 of the code. So, without giving them opportunity to be heard, they should not decide anything. Dispute and uh, existence of dispute under section 5 sub clause 6 of the code. In this case, it was held that whether notice of dispute in fact raised the dispute and that too within the parameters of two definition that and default. Okay. So, it was decided that in another case construction company limited definition of dispute under section 5 sub clause 6 of the code uh, held to be illustrative one. Okay. So, guys this was about the insolvency and professional uh, bankruptcy code and my hypothesis and my reasoning is that people are doing business for profit. You will be working as a manager, eventually you will become a senior manager or maybe you will become an entrepreneur. So, you are doing business for profit, all parties are doing for profit, but sometime uh, due to unintentional uncontrolled situation in the market, people are not able to repay their debts. Okay? I hope you are understanding this point. They are not able to repay their debts, therefore, it is very difficult for them to continue in business. Now, the question arises, should we kick them off from the market? Should we create a situation where people do not even dare to become entrepreneur or business person? So, the business running a business should not be a taboo. Okay? I think in last 50, 60, 70 years what the society we have created that if you are running a business, if you make money then everybody will come to take the part like the government will come for the taxes, people will come for jobs and everybody wants to you know party with you. Party means like everybody wants to have some share with you. But if something goes wrong with your business, then the entire blame is on you. Then they say, okay, you lose your business, now you suffer. But is it fair? This is not fair system. So, that is a one part. Obviously, there are some uh, other part also. There are some unintentional uh, delays, uh, some bad faith, you know, uh, people, wrong people, corrupt people, greedy people, manipulative people. So, there are two types of business business people you know one honest people hard working people they want to do their business with honesty uh, sometimes they lose money sometimes they lose their business due to some uncontrollable situations like during the corona like for example if you suppose you just started a factory for example if i give you one example uh, in december uh, 2019 you launched a factory okay you took lot of loan and then you took lot of raw material on credit and you say okay i will pay you in march like please give me 3 months time and i will pay you in march and you start uh, doing your production and by 20th of march suddenly everything is stopped now there is no buyer and you have your stuff with you you have got your orders but there is no way that you can supply them there is no transport facility and eventually your all orders got cancelled Okay. You thought that I will get my money from 20th March till 31st of March and 1st of April I will pay you, I will pay my uh, people you know, the but on 20th of March everything stopped. Now, you cannot pay anyone, your orders are lying in your factory, there is there are no workers for you, everybody has gone their home. Now, in that situation what we should do. First option that uh, whatever you have invested, people should go to the courtroom. They say, okay, we want our money back and we really do not care what happened with this guy. Second approach could be that yes, let us go to NCLT, try to find a solution. And the NCLT guy says, okay, we do understand, we appoint a professional person, he will sit with you, he will try to find a solution. And then in, in this process, if we can help him, this, this person for 3 to 6 months, then maybe he can run his business again and then eventually you get your money back. Okay? 
or second option that maybe he can pay you right now 20 percent amount and remaining 80 percent amount you get after one year. So, there are so many options, there are so many opportunities for both parties. In that scenario, that person can get some time, some, some fresh air, fresh opportunity and run his business again. And when things get uh, normal after the corona thing, employees can come back, laborers can come back, they can start their job and then all parties are happy. So, that is one situation. This is the involvement, this is the positive side of insolvency and bankruptcy law for honest people, okay, honest businessmen. So, law is not only, as I said, this law is not about adversarial, it is not about right or wrong, it is about finding right solution. So, in one situation, the honest people are saved. Now, there is another situation that I am running my business and I do not want to pay people. Now, simple, this is my business strategy that I always like to take money from them, but I do not want to pay them. In that situation, now there are, suppose in the absence of insolvency and bankruptcy code, that person owns maybe 20 crore from you and you say this is unfair, at least you should give me 15 crore. He said, no, I really do not want to pay you even a single penny, you go to the court. And in courtroom, we will fight with you for next 10, 15, 20 years. This, as you know, this is like how Indian courts are working. And then during that 10, 15, 20 years, you invest maybe another 1 crore rupees on your lawyer's fees. Okay? And after 20 years, that guy pays you maybe 10 crore, 15 crore rupees. Okay? So, he is the winner, but you are the loser. And not only you are the loser, the, all the people who are associated with you, because I said earlier that when one person loses, so many people loses after him. So, when you are not getting your money, your people, employees, your uh, supplier, your vendors, they are also losing. In that scenario, the insolvency and bankruptcy law can help you. Like you can go before the NCLT and say this company is not paying me, please help me. Then the expert will come and he will try to assess the situation and will ask a very practical question to this guy, when you have resources, when you have money, why you are not paying him? Because right now, you are not able to access his bank accounts. You really do not know whether he got the money or not. But once the professional person is appointed by NCLT, he can assess his accounts book, he can assess his bank account and everything. Then he will ask a very practical question, why you are not paying him? You have got money, okay, so pay him first thing. Suppose he does not have that much money and he say, okay, if you do not have much money, are you ready to find a solution? If you are not ready to find a solution, we will do the liquidation process. The liquidation process, we will sell off your company and we will give money to creditors. So, guys, insolvency and bankruptcy law is going to become very important. Right now, it is not uh, uh, introduced for partnership firms, individual firms, LLPs, but very soon, I believe that after this corona, it will be introduced for partnership firms also, individuals also, even if an individual person is not paying the money. Suppose if someone is doing business, not a company, as an individual business or a partnership firm, uh, then you do not need to go to a civil court, you just go to the NCLT and go for the application. So, what I believe that as a business person, as a business manager, if you use insolvency and bankruptcy for the right purpose in good time or in bad time, both this law can help you to minimize your risk, you know, minimize your business risk and can provide lot of business solutions and uh, it also promotes entrepreneurship. So, if you want to start a new business, this law can help you, you know. So, if even if you lose, you do not lose everything in your life. You lose only one part of your business and then you exit and you do some another business. So, I was talking about entrepreneurship, you know, obviously now you, you are very clear about uh, the companies, but how the insolvency and bankruptcy can help you to become a good entrepreneur? See, whenever you want to become an entrepreneur, you are taking a risk that what if you lose, what if your company does not work. 
So in that scenario, you want to minimize, you want to fix your liabilities. So like for example, if I say that I am launching my startup and uh, my liabilities should not affect my personal life or my family life, my uh, family property, my personal property. So you create an LLP type of model. Okay? But then if you are not able to repay your debts, people start filing cases against you. And then after 5 years, 10 years, going to courtroom, uh, in civil court, criminal court, uh, DRT, then high court, uh, you are absolutely destroyed. So you, you, you lose your business, that is a very great disaster. But after losing your business, instead of focusing your energy on some another business, you are moving around with so many litigation. Okay. So, that is a deterrence effect on the entrepreneurship. When you see that other entrepreneurs are facing the same situation, you do not want to start your new company. So, this insolvency and bankruptcy law can help you. It, it says okay, you do your business with honesty, you keep your documents very clean and after some efforts, with your best efforts, if you are not able to repay your debts. Okay, then please go to the NCLT and declare yourself bankrupt. And bankruptcy is not a bad word. Maybe in Indian context, bankruptcy is a bad word, but you need to understand the formal president of United States, Donald uh, Trump, he, uh, he declared himself bankrupt many times in his life. So, you declared yourself, uh, you declared yourself as a bankrupt only for that particular startup. You are not, it is not the end of your life. This is just like end of that particular company or that particular startup. You finish it there, then you move on. You move on, you start a new business. Okay? So, and for the entrepreneurship, easy entry and easy exit, both are important. So, this insolvency and bankruptcy law can help you for exit, uh, smooth exit also without any humiliation, whatever you have in your company that will be sold and whatever money they, give, they receive, not you, the, the, the professional uh, person, whatever money he receives, he will give that money to creditors, matter is off, no further litigation against you. So, what I believe that this law really can help you in uh, doing business, entrepreneurship and when you join a company. Whenever you see this situation and if you believe that things are getting outside, out of control, you can give advice to your uh, bosses, your seniors that sir, there is an insolvency in bankruptcy law, can we use it? Okay? So, with these words, I wish you good luck uh, for your professional career and for your entrepreneurship career. Thank you very much.